Mass Tort News presents LegalCast. Welcome to the front line of breaking news in mass torts and other complex litigation areas. We bring you real-time intel and opinions about litigation dockets that are changing history. Mass Tort News is the official media sponsor of Mass Torts Puerto Rico, a legal conference taking place the first week of May in San Juan, Puerto Rico. In advance of this inaugural conference, we sat down with legal marketing guru Harlan Schillinger to discuss his best practices for preparing to attend a legal conference. Don't miss this opportunity to listen in on an intimate conversation with the grandfather of legal advertising. Hi, Harlan. Thanks so much for being here with us uh, and in early in the morning, too. Oh, you're more than welcome. I love, uh, I love getting on early in the morning uh, because my mind is clear. I'm with you too. I just need a little bit of coffee for the boost. Uh, let, let's dive right into it. Uh, you are the guru of all things marketing. So in advance of Mass Torts Puerto Rico and uh, you know, in the midst of the, the legal conference circuit, I wanted to talk to you and get some insight from you on how lawyers should be preparing to go to legal conferences or meetings, uh, because it's not just a matter of showing up there and expecting everything to you know, be perfect for you. What do you think lawyers should be thinking about before that begins? Well, when you asked me, uh, or when you suggested this, uh, this first question, all I could really think about is my client for many, many, many years is Johnny Cochran. And, and Mr. Cochran always said preparation, preparation, preparation. You know, prepare to go in, prepare for the best, prepare for the worst. And, and truthfully, that was really what he did best. And when he went into court, he was prepared for almost everything because he put the time and the effort in ahead of time. And so reflecting on the question that you're asking me, you know, it's a wide open thing. The truth of the matter is you have to be prepared going anywhere you go. Otherwise, you're just going to catch something. And it's it's really, I guess we have a technical term in the advertising. It's half-assed. And uh, you know, you get out of life or you get out of a project what you put into it. You know, going into a conference, um, if you think about it, you're spending a lot of money to go. The most important money you're spending is your time. And you have to have a goal as to what you want to get out of it. And it's not just sitting in a chair and listening to the speaker, you know, bestow, you know, their information on you so that you can go back and be a better lawyer. The truth of the matter is marketing and networking is incredibly important. You know, making relationships in this business is, is so, so important because you're, you're, you're always looking for your next case. You're always looking for your next opportunity. Uh, and if you sit in a chair and, uh, and, and not mingle or not prepare yourself to in, in, engage with people, you're really missing half your opportunity. Yeah. So let me break it down a little bit because what you said raised a good point. Well, to me, it sounds like a good point, but there are different reasons why we want to meet different people, right? There's different things we want to get out of a conference. So as an attorney, surely I'm looking for a, a business opportunity, right? The next case, some way to collaborate with someone. There are also certainly, uh, and I'll be the first to admit it, there, when I see the roster of who's attending, there are certain people that I just want to meet, whether I've heard about them for years, I've looked up to them, I've admired them. Um, I find them interesting. There's some sort of synergy, right? So there's just some people that that I want to meet, um, and you know, so there's I, I would think different ways to approach those two things. Um, but what do you like? What did Johnny do, and what what do you think that we should do in advance? I look at the attendee list, right? I I go through it and I try to see. Yeah, the 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 reference to Cochrane was just you know preparation is everything. Sure. Uh, when you go to a conference. Believe it or not, and, and I know this from my involvement in conferences, you know, my uh, you know, involvement running the business of law for national trial lawyers, is that most people, believe it or not, walk in unprepared. And what does pre preparation mean? Uh, you know, if I have a, an objective and I want to meet certain people, you've got to go out of your way to do that. And I think the mo most underutilized, uh, you know, a, a opportunity, you know, going into a conference you know, Alyssa is, is, is knowing who's going there and reaching out to them and saying, I want to meet you. 
I mean, it's it sounds complicated. And the reason people don't do it is, number one, their biggest excuse is I didn't have the time or I ran out of time and I was so busy before the conference. You know, for some reason, everything happens before you go away. Right. And and but that's not an excuse. You know, lawyers are very deliberate. You know, it's a deliberate practice. Somebody does something, you do something back. You know, whether it's a brief or whether it's, you know, whatever it is, it's very deliberate. So why wouldn't you be deliberate in your goal in marketing? But but keep in mind, most lawyers don't understand marketing. Networking is marketing. Everything you do, everything you do about your personality, everything you do about your image, everything you do is truly marketing. And it's my opinion and and you know, since I got into the, you know, the agency business and started going into conferences, I never took a booth. And I believe in taking booths, but I just didn't. And I didn't because I was so busy, you know, when I got to the conference, because I already had appointments, people knew that I was looking to track them down. So I appointments work- ahead of time, right, is, is smart. And, and even if they need to get pushed, people's agendas get get really filled up once they get there. Uh, I think for, you know, I think we're, we're talking about probably established lawyers, more junior lawyers that are maybe just starting to get into the business, whether it's mass torts or otherwise, are sometimes quite hesitant to reach out to people that they admire, people they want to meet with. I always say, just ask. The worst you get is a no. But most often, people just say yes because so many lawyers and and you know lawyer enthusiasts, I'll call you, or recovering lawyers, right? They want to help others. Um, I always. What do you think about that? Just just asking. Well, the friends that I have in the business and the clients and the, and the people that I know, you know, so called the big guys, you know, the big the big shots, you know, you know whether it's you know uh, you know. A, you know, a, a Gloria or a Mark or, uh, you know, any of them, they're very open to meeting people. They're, they're more than open to sharing and to, uh, you know, networking. I mean, that's how they got to where they are. And yeah. we all have this sense of, okay, this is the next generation. Uh, but most importantly, you want to treat people the way you want to be treated. And I'm just telling you that I don't know any lawyer, and I really say this very strongly because that's a strong statement. I don't know any lawyer that isn't receptive to shaking someone's hand or meeting them. Uh, it, you know, that has, you know, good character. You know, that it's has. It's part of the business, right? It's part of who we are, it's part of what we do. And th- making those connections is how we ultimately help others because it's is a, a, a job of service, right? We're, we're in service of others for the most part. Well, you know, I come from the school of if you give more than you take, then you have a lot at the end of the, the week. And the people that I've associated with, the clients that I've worked with, you know, all feel that same way. It just seems to be that's the way, you know, the big shots are. Uh, sure. Because that's, and that's how we how all got to a point, right, where you just have a first name and everyone knows who you're talking about. Um, I, I think it's it's pretty spectacular. Well, the truth uh, of it is, in getting to the crust of the of the question, is that you have to have a goal in mind. And if I want to, if I want to meet you, of course I can meet you, but I have to prepare for it. You know, it, it, it makes sense to just look at somebody's bio. It makes sense to say something. Um, you know, you want to make a relationship and show it's always best to, and my wife reminds me of this. And I said this to you in another interview, she wakes me up and when I wake up in the morning, be interested, not interesting which means ask a lot of questions. You know, you, you know, I was intimidated when I met you. Uh, you know, you've got a great background and, you know, you're, you're an accomplished lawyer. You're doing now what you like best. Uh, but it was, it was I, I won't lie, it, it was, you know, a little intimidating. But I, I sat down and if you recall, I asked you more questions than you asked me. I, you, yeah, you flipped the script on me, and I, you know, I was intimidated to meet you as well. Um, it, it's just sort of, sort of funny how that, how that happened, but I, I like that a lot. Be interested, not interesting. I think uh, people sometimes don't, and maybe I was guilty of this, but don't ask enough questions. And if you prepare ahead of time and learn about someone, you'll know the right questions to ask, and it could be something really simple and not related to law, or just that shows that you've done your research or, or looked into them and you have a genuine, authentic interest in, in what they're doing. And I think people connect over that. It's not always about, hey, you're working on this. Let's do business together. It's something simple that you can connect over. 
you know, I find that I, f I find that if I have a half an hour meeting with somebody, I mean, I know this may sound unproductive to most of your, you know, listeners and such, but believe it or not, I, I, and it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it take up maybe 15 minutes of, 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 you know, conversation, you know, that's not wasted time. That's building a relationship with somebody. You know, the most important thing is you want to be sincere. And so when you prepare for somebody and you make a comment to somebody and you say to, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, to a Mark Aragos, you know, what, uh, you know, what's your favorite, you know, what's your favorite food? I mean, on his website, you know, he likes, he likes good restaurants. He, you know, he owns a number of restaurants, but knowing, getting to know somebody in a sincere way, you know, goes a long, long way because sincerity and character is everything. But getting back to, again, getting back to preparing, you know, if you can't, if you want to meet somebody and you can't spend three minutes or five minutes looking at, you know, who they are, then how sincere are you in wanting to meet them? I, I think it's true. And, and some, there's always something that comes up when, when you're an attorney. I mean, I, this is just our whole lives just get taken away by emergencies and, you know, court filings and special set hearings and all that. But uh, at the end of the day, you, you actually, everything you're saying is true. You've got to prepare. Um, curiously, well, can I, I say know, something? May I no. say one thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking at your agenda for, for, um, for Puerto Rico and yeah. you've got some incredibly smart and powerful, when I say powerful, knowledgeable, you know, speakers. And so if I want to meet Michael Watts, hypothetically, um, and, 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 and I, I don't know Michael Watts. Well, I've shake, shook his hand a number of times. I did some business with him, you know, in, you know, in the, in the height of mass torts. Uh, I believe if you reach out to Mr. Watts ahead of time and say, I'm going to be in Puerto Rico and, uh, you know, it's a small intimate conference because it's all about knowledge and relationships. I bet you Michael says, I'd you know, be happy to sit, sit down with you. I bet anything on that. But I'm using that just as an example and whether it's Paul Napoli or Maria Napoli or, you know, or, or Richard Arsenault, most people don't know Richard. He's a back, he takes a seat in the back, but he's huge, huge, you know, a litigator in, in mass torts. You know, I know these people and I've been, I've been there so many times when somebody comes up and says, I'd like to shake your hand. And they, he's, you know, he just turns, you know, to that individual and spends some quality time with him. Because I know something about those people. They want to know who you are. And they're eager to hear your story. They really are. Successful people listen. It's true. A actively listening. And, and I know uh, the people that you've mentioned, they're really, truly wonderful and they're great to work with. What do you just, this came into my head. What do you think about the approach of, and, and we use LinkedIn for this a lot to see, like, let's say I want to meet Michael Watts. I would look and see who's connected with him on LinkedIn and ask a colleague of mine or a friend or whomever to introduce me. Do you think that that's effective or should we just go straight to it? Well, that's a softball question, and and you know it's effective uh, because there's nothing better than a recommendation to somebody. You know, if I wanted to meet you, and I, you know, I I know your producer Matt. Hypothetically, if I said Matt, can you introduce me to uh, Alyssa? And she, you know, the, what's the what's he going to say? He's gonna, Absolutely, of course. Well, we Matt, wanna Matt's the best. He would always he would always say yes. I'm just I using him as an example. I know, I know. You I know, just take an opportunity to say how awesome he is. Um, but, he is awesome. I, I never thought of it really like as as a recommendation to me. Let's say I, I'm I'm usually the one who wants to meet someone. To me, it's an easy. The sort of like easy way in, uh, I guess it, no one's going to introduce me if they think I'm an idiot. So that's a, a good idea. But I didn't know if there was something you thought that was more effective about being really direct in making that introduction. And it sounds like the answer is no. Well, I think I, I don't know. I have very, very often reached out and and said to a, you know to a friend or an acquaintance or, or could you do me a favor and introduce me and they're very eager to do that as long as they feel my character is good to pass through their you know their hands uh and i i think it's incredibly effective but if you think about it the best case that it's ever going to come to your office is going to be through referral and so it ties into that referral thing look we're in a relationship world a relationship business if any lawyer thinks that it's not about relationships, they're mistaken. That's how you get business. Whether you're advertising and trying to get a relationship with the public or whatever, 
but conferences are, are are so important for two reasons. Number one, you get to meet people and you get to learn from them. The most important thing in a conference is to walk away with something, walk away with a bit of knowledge, a nugget. And I would divide that into two pieces. I would divide that into knowledge, you know, from the subject matter, you know, the sure. Like the, the substantive law. knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And absolutely divide that into networking. Because you came to a conference to meet somebody on stage. Wouldn't it be great to have a relationship with that person or to be able to call that person or just to, to, to get to know that person better? And it would. And, and I think a lot of times we it's frustrating in a way for, and I'm thinking from the perspective of sort of up and coming lawyers uh, who haven't been out this for you know, 30 years, but it's frustrating because you almost, you have to spend time to build those relationships and then the business flows from it. And a lot of times I think lawyers expect things to happen very quickly, but it's all built on relationships. I was always taught it's, it's about being top of mind and being the person that when, you know, something hits the fan or there's a need, you're the person that comes to mind. And so, you know, you do that by you know, I think being yourself, right, being authentic, and I've tried to emulate other lawyers that <laughs> doesn't really work out very well for me. So I stick with who I am, and I can't be some other people, and that's okay. And, um, you know, and, and you just have to connect with them on a personal level. Uh, stick to something that you know, right? Stay in your lane. I think lawyers are often hesitant to recommend others because work is getting pulled away from them. But in the end, your clients really appreciate when you're giving them the best advice. And sometimes that advice is go to someone else. So, um, you know, the same goes for, for meeting other lawyers. You said you want to, um, or, or you think it's a, a good idea to walk away with something from a conference. I agree too. I don't think um, it's a good idea. I think it's a must. Well, it's a, um, well, if, if you didn't do it, you failed. Right. And so I guess when you walk away from the conference and you go back to your desk or wherever it is that you work, kitchen, you know, now in a laundry room, I don't know, we're all working remotely anyway. What do you recommend for follow-up, right? Because you can't just let things stay. There, there needs to be some action uh, on the back end. So I was at a, a meeting, uh, Mass Torts Made Perfect last week, two weeks ago. And, and, and I walked away with the seven people that I really want to, it's right here on my desk, honest to goodness. Wow. It's seven people sitting right here. We're sitting in my office, right on my desk. Yeah. And the first thing that I did when I came back is I thanked them for the meeting. Sincere, it's authentic. I appreciated it. They spent Just two an minutes email, with like me. a quick email? A quick, uh, actually, I prefer text. Okay. Uh, and the reason I like text is because, number one, it's, it's uh, people read it. Number two, it's it's easy to do. I read a I read a uh, I read a, a a post on on Facebook the other day, and it said, you know, if you if you don't have two two minutes or a minute to text me, then how important I am. I'm taking it out of context. But, no, that but makes the truth sense. of the matter is, look, everything is built on authenticity and credibility. Those are the two most important words you have to understand when you whether you're networking or whether you're talking to a jury. And if, if you're going to take time, you know, you know, here I am, if I'm going to take time to talk to Jim Onder, uh, I'm going to take the time to thank him or to respond to him. What do I want? Why did I take his card? Why did I, why did I connect with him? What's the purpose? You know, do I, am I a card collector? You know, you know, are they baseball cards? There's no value in this card, but there's no value in this card unless we have something to, to, to do. And you talk about young lawyers. I was always impressed by a young man who was in law school, uh, Kender. He up in, where is he? He's in Springfield, Massachusetts. And he's a criminal lawyer. And he came to National Tribe Lawyers. And he was so intimidated. He came up to me and he said, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we went you know, through the conversation. And then he texted me. Now he's a lawyer. He's representing a prize fighter. He's got a, a very productive practice because he went out of his way to connect with people. And I'll never forget that. So I had a drink with him at National Trial Lawyers and I, and I told him something very, very important to me. I actually learned more from him and him doing that than he learned from me. I mean, if I'm really honest with myself, you know, what did, what did, it, what did it remind me to do? It reminded me to do what he's doing. Now, how valuable is that? 
very to me, valuable. it's very, very valuable. Yeah. You know, I, I think that you have to, when you network, uh, you have to be sincere because it's character and authentic. Yeah. You know, I always think about, or I've looked at the, you know, the personality quizzes and people figuring out whether they're introverts or extroverts or introverted extroverts or whatever, whatever the matrix says. I uh, am a thousand percent drained when I'm finished with a conference. Like often I actually get, get sick, but it, it sucks all my energy out because I feel like I put so much energy into it. Um, and so if I leave a conference and I don't feel that way, then I know that I haven't done what I probably should have. And, and so, you know, what do you do from it? You just do better next time. There are always, there's always a legal conference, right? Um, but for me, that's, that's, it's not a matter of trying too hard. It's that just being authentic and, and focusing. I mean, you have to be present in that conversation or in that moment, and there's so much happening around you. Um, so that, for me, that's my totem in a way, but I'm sure everyone else, you know, it's maybe hard to say out loud, but you can admit to yourself when you haven't quite done a good job. Um, but, but hopefully, well, it certainly sounds like you did a, a great job at MTMP. I know, um, I'm working on some of the projects from the connections that, that I made out there. And, uh, it seems like it was an excellent conference. Um, Masterworks Puerto Rico is coming up in May. Uh, I know that National Trial Lawyers also has a conference in November. Is it's in Scottsdale? Is that right? Yeah, it's a conference based on the business of law. And we're taking that serious and we're taking, we're deep. D digging in deeper than ever before, you know, we're really, uh, we're actually even spending a, an entire day on, you know, what's going on in Arizona with, you know, outside ownership and, and what yeah. have you. So it's a, it's a, it'll be a very unique conference. Ty and, and Phil have been great to us over the years and fortunate to call them partners and excited for them forecasting what the evolution of this industry is going to look like. I'm sorry that I, I can't make it to Puerto Rico because I have a conflict, but boy, I sure would love to go there. And I'll tell you why. And, and, and this is from the heart. You're going to have 250, 300 people there. Now, that's a lot of people, but it's not a lot of people. It's a very personalized conference. I'm not saying this for the camera. I'm not saying I'm not. You know me. I'm not a patronizing kind of guy. But what what. What, what that kind of a conference gives you a great opportunity to do is to really, really learn and truly network with people. You know, the people that you have speaking, you know, they're regular people. They're not, they're not, they're not, how do I say it? I was going to say they're not special, but they are special. But plan on going and being present. You know, you use that word present, and that's one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Because what it means is you be authentic with people. That's really the essence of being present. It's listening. Yeah, it's you not know, always but, easy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I commend you for building a conference like that because we don't have enough conferences that are intimate and very focused and give the people an opportunity to be interactive. Yeah, well, it, I can't take the credit for it. Um, the trial lawyers uh, of Puerto Rico, Master of Med School, putting it together. a for d is uh, organizing it. I have the, it's actually a great pleasure of putting together the substantive programming for it. Um, and, you know, certainly had a hand in that, but um, we're very much behind the scenes. I'll, I'll be emceeing it only because they, I guess they were looking for someone who likes to talk a lot. So um, I guess if you were going, you might've taken that role for me. So I'm certainly glad, but I'm looking forward to it as well. I, I, I'm sad that you can't be there, but I'm sure your conference will be great. And for 2023, I, I hope you'll uh, take the invitation and, and meet us there. Well, um, I've already committed to coming next year. Um, I, I really like. I just those wanted you to say it on camera. <laughs> I really like those kind of conferences because you get to meet people, and you get to you know you go back to this networking and how do you prepare for it? Uh, you know, go into it with an open mind, but go into it with a goal and. Go out of your way to introduce yourself to people. You'll be surprised. Nobody's going to say, or I hope they certainly don't say, it, is, you know, I don't have time for you. That, that doesn't work in our business. It's not where we all came from. Uh, it's not how we built our businesses. And, you know, you I want to touch on something. You know, you, you, you said, you know, I'm a go-to person or, you know, a... Uh, you know, a, 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 a Paul da a Na Napoli is a go-to person. Uh, it's because we, we've built credibility by giving good information. 
And it's all about credibility. You don't wake up in the morning and say, okay, well, that guy's a guru. No, I mean, we've been doing this. I've been doing this 40, more than 45 years. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't come to you quickly. You have to work at it. But the most important thing about networking, I'm gonna give you the tip of the day, is be sincere and learn and know who you're talking to. And if you don't, learn who you talk to afterwards. But if you're going to take the time to shake someone's hand and say, I want to get to know you, mean it. Do you, when you're, um, I know you collect cards, but do you write on the back of them uh, as people walk away, little things? Like, how do you collect that information? Actually, I don't collect cards. I, I take a card because I need to walk away from the, I need to walk away from the event uh, with a contact. And mm -hmm. Um, actually, I'm in the process of ordering an automatic card. You know, you touch touch somebody's phone and they I give you those. all that. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm just setting mine up because it's brilliant. I mean, you know, for 50 bucks or less, you know, you, it's great. you and then I don't have to carry all these cards. But here's a here's a card from an individual, right? His cell phone is not on it, but it's on the back because I asked yeah. for it. Yeah. And so. Um, in the I was like, in the old days when we had cards, I used to when I would walk away for whether it was a lunch or dinner or something, write something. And so in my Outlook, I would have a note like what, the date that I met this person, where like they have twins, the birthday is October fourteenth, something like that. So that when I I spend like fifteen minutes in the morning, you know, having my twelfth cup of coffee and just rolling through social media, and I send a couple of emails out, just touching base, whether it's an article I saw, it could be a meme, something stupid, but now we've got the virtual cards. And I remember at, at National Trial Lawyers, I had one um, with Trevor Goring and he was just fascinated that we could just scan the QR code and it just went right into his phone. It was just, it was fun. Um, and, and so, you know, that is a moment that I can reference when I, you know, sort of move on and leave. Remember that time when, where we did this, but um, I carry a little notepad because there's just some there's just too much data or I'll have a, you like this on a text thread with myself where I just take notes in it. Um, because you know, opening notes is too complicated. My, my text is right there, but I always like to capture those little things that I learn. And then you, know, you can dig in after the fact about people. Lawyers are lawyers, but they're so dynamic. You know, some like fishing, some uh, are history buffs, you know, all these sort of different things that, you know, I think make us sort of who we are. And, and the Paul Napoli's of the world, you're right. It's all about, being there, doing things for other people and reputation. And you build your reputation by being that person. Otherwise, it's like judges always tell lawyers, you know, we talk, right? We talk. And if you're horrible um, and ha are obnoxious to your, your counterpart, you know, the judges are going to talk about it. Same thing with lawyers. If even if a, a young lawyer goes to someone else and asks for something and they're just horrible and, you know, some lawyers have been known to be whatever it is, you know, the, anti-women or just rude to young lawyers, whatever that is, that, that word travels fast. And so- Well, you're looking for the word that's called narcissistic. Yeah, well, and and when, to... when, when people are narcissistic, you know, uh, you know, they're not authentic or they are, but that's not- you Yeah, know, they're people... authentically narcissistic. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you know that that's, uh, I think we're really lucky to have, so there's such a rich legal community, especially in the mass tort space. Um, I know that I could <laughs> sit and talk to you forever about all the clients you've worked with and the things that you've learned. Um, you said, I'd like to you give you one, want... I'd like to give you one, one very, very strong tip that I learned the hard way. When I could leave a conference, well, actually the, you know, if it's a three day conference, you know, I come back to my, to my room, uh, and I'm getting ready to go to bed and I, I organize myself for, for the next day. And the reason I do that is because I can't remember. If I'm going to float into the next day, I can't remember what I did the first day. And, and I can't remember all of the conversations I had with this one, this one, this one, this one. And so I departmentalize everything and I put it into order and I, re I prioritize everything. And the very first thing that I do when I leave a conference, and this is, and this is a habit, uh, some people get on the plane and they go to sleep or they watch a movie. The very, very first thing I do, which is what you actually described you do is I write down who I want to reach tomorrow. And the reason I do that is because when I get home tomorrow, I'm going to have so much on my plate. Uh, you know, I have to make up for the last three days that I was away and, and, and life gets in, 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 gets away and having a, and having a, uh, having a, I'm looking for a list. Yeah. Having a list of you know, yeah, who, this I'm, is, I'm grabbing stuff off my desk. I'm, I mean, this, this is, is real. my next question to you. Harlan, I mean, having so. a list of this is exactly what I need to do. Wow. Um, you and I are so similar. 
<laughs> and, and I have several different lists. I have, you know, my to-do list, my this, but this is my hot list. This is what, this is what I spoke to somebody yesterday about. And okay. I know I got a lot in my head and I got a good memory. It's just short. The, the, tr the, tr the truth of it is, is that you've only got a certain amount of space right. in your head. Yeah. So how can you keep putting stuff in? You got well, you you to write things and down. Do you, I'm curious, do you just have lists on legal pads? Do you use an organizational tool, um, like whether to take notes or I, I use Evernote and I take lists and I'm able to cross them off, but I'm forever drawn to the paper calendars and sticky notes. Um, I, I, I call it organized chaos. You mean like this? I carry, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. So, well, yeah, a little bit. Sort I'm of, old you know, school. Like a couple things here and there. I'm old but school. But how do you keep it organized? I guess you are you're a you're a list person, paper calendar type. Well, the first thing I do when I organize is I get rid of what I don't want to have, uh, what's not, what's not relevant, and I get rid of the clutter. So hmm? It feels great. It's so cathartic. It feels so good. Well, I'm a big of believer of uh, feng shui, but the yeah. first thing that I do is I stream, uh, you know, streamline everything. I get rid of, you know, you know, it's kind of like being a hoarder. You know, most people, you know, they have this name that they, they don't know what, the, there's no real relationship with it. So I prioritize and I prioritize exactly who I want to, you know, who I, what I have to do. And that eliminates an awful lot of clutter on my desk because clutter on your desk is, is the same as clutter in your head. And so eliminate the clutter. That's the most important thing because you're, you, you, you know, we're back to equality, not quantity. Right. Um, let me, I want to ask one more question and, and then I'm going to let you go make some magic today. Cause I know you probably have a lot of things on that list, but you had, it, it sort of stuck with me and you'd said, um, be interested, not interesting. Uh, so I want to ask, and I agree being interested is, is critical and probably a lot more difficult than being interesting, but some lawyers um, well, let's say if you have a whole sea of dudes in suits, right? They all kind of look the same and, and none of them really stand out. Maybe someone does, but is there, I guess there's some people, for example, like always wear a pinstripe suit or always have, uh, you know, a, a beautiful, uh, you know, boutonniere, like a, a, just something about them that it is interesting, but it's just them. Um, I, you know, I think when we brand ourselves, usually it happens earlier on, certain things stick. Is there someone that comes to mind? Is there something you think of that could be useful when, again, we're starting sort of starting earlier in someone's career that could be useful in branding and marketing later on? You know, I, I you know, the question reminds me of, um, of, uh, of, you know, people that walk into the room and, you know, they're, you know, whether it's Mr. Cochran or Paul Hanley, or uh, I think I may have messed his first name up, you know, from, from uh, you know, he was so, so distinguished when they walk in the room. But I think the most important thing for you to do is to be yourself. You know, if you have a style, um, if you have a, you know, you just got to be yourself. I mean, I have a style. I feel most comfortable in, in jeans and a press shirt and a sport jacket. You know, that's my style. That's my thing. That's, you know, that's how I, you know, I started doing that in college and, and, uh, but that's my style, you know, uh, you know, Steve, well, Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs had a style, you know, he, what didn't always do this, you know, he went from a, a suit and tie to a tie to a shirt to a no tie and then you know the last 20 years of his life you know he never appeared in public on stage without ha in that black turtleneck you know that mock neck and and that jeans and and you want to know what people mostly remember about him is he never wore a belt okay so that's a style you know yeah, and true. and i know that's a little detaily but no that, to... that for me that's what i'm talking about actually because I obviously I notice people, but when I'm there's a sea of people. I mean, NTL was massive. There were a lot of people. I recognize things like that, like these little. And I'm trying to think of little quirky things. Whether it's like someone that has a red briefcase or wears orange shoes, or and, and for me, it's it's you know the physicality of it, something that I can see. But I remember those things, and then you see them doing it over time, and it becomes like their brand, you know, their thing. Th it's an interesting subject that you just brought up, and I'm gonna fall back to my dad. And my mom, actually, they both said this, you know, it's 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 not how you make your money. It's how you spend it. And so when you're in a business that you're asking people for money 
and you're going to say, I'm going to do this for you and we're going to do this for you. You know, I don't remember anybody ever bringing this subject up, so I'm going to bring it up. It's people are going to notice how you spend your money and how you're going to spend their money. And so if you're a new lawyer and you're a, you're a new, uh, let's say you're a vendor, hypothetically, and you're, uh, and I've seen this in the vendor world, and I love vendors, I'm not picking on vendors, I'm picking on people, you know, they come to a conference and they buy, you know, the most expensive suit or a young lady has a wonderful, you know, burka bag or whatever bag they have, right? And they know they, they you know, so it's, you know, that's the kind of a reflection well of good taste but also depending on who you are and how you present it you know if you flaunt it you know that's on that the first thing that comes to my mind is how you're going to spend my money so it's it, it and that's really really important when it comes to when it comes to you know how you present yourself i i want to i i love this and i'm also going to request that we save it for our next <laughs> interview because it's actually really um something that's that's important to me um, but I, I completely agree. And, and, you know, you can make moves that, <laughs> that sort of tank an entire relationship based on, you know, a, a $12,000 or $25,000 purse, right? Like that's, that can well, happen. The most, Alyssa, the most important thing is you have to be authentic mm -hmm. and you have to be, uh, you know, you have to be authentic and you have to have good character or you have, yeah, uh, that's not, well, that's not that really up. the word I was looking for. You have to be authentic and you have to be, you know, that's how you build respect. Sincere. Yeah. Sincere. You, I mean, it's, it used, I use the word authentic, use sincere, but, but it, it, sometimes it takes a while. Um, oh, hello. Um, and it's hard for us to sort of lean into that, um, you know, be comfortable with who you are and, and sort of present that. So that takes work. But in terms of, um, of legal conferences and getting out behind our desks, uh, I appreciate all the pearls of wisdom that you've given and, um, you know, I, I really, really appreciate you and your time. You're always so present and, and so sincere in what you're saying. And you'll, you'll call me out on something if you disagree, which I really appreciate because not everyone does. Um, well, but it's not Harley a question. It's not a question of calling you out. It's a question of a difference of opinion. And we all have difference of opinions. Nobody is a hundred percent correct. Some people don't, some people don't voice it uh, for whatever reason. Um, I, you know, I, I think that's, I've just noticed it a lot. People will just say, yes, yes, yes. Say, oh, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, they have no idea, right? People just are afraid to be vulnerable and and show that they either don't know or disagree or something like that for fear of maybe being wrong or-, or Well, if just... you listen 52% of the time and talk 48% of the time, you're ahead of the game. Can I give your viewers one tip Please on networking? Do. Yes. The most important book that you can read, and I read it once a year, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's 100 years old. It's the second most published book next to the Bible. And it's the foundation of all of these gurus and all of these self-help people. Certainly, you know, whether it's a Tony Robbins or a, uh, you know, uh, whoever it may be. Uh, but if you want to know how to really and, and, and understand how to go into a conference and how to interact with people, that's okay, so I've never read that, and I will read it before my conference. Um, we'll make sure to put the link uh, for uh, anyone who's watching this to be able to purchase it, too. Um, I appreciate it so much, and I really, really look forward to seeing you. Hopefully, it's before November, um, but uh, even if it's that far away, I'll, I'll wait. And, and always such a pleasure to talk to you, Harlan. Thank you. Thank you very much.